Okay, so this uh, first of two tutorials is going to be regarding uh, establishing the use of the lighting analysis tools in 3D Studio Design. So we know that typically we're going to do most of our base modeling inside of Revit. So we're going to start there on both tutorials. The first one we're going to look specifically at daylighting with a sun system. The next tutorial will actually look at daylighting with artificial lights that we set up inside of Revit and then render and do a lighting analysis inside of 3D Studio Design. So this first test we're looking specifically at sunlighting only or daylighting. Um, so what we're going to do first is I do want to go ahead and set up a camera view. You can certainly do this inside of 3D Studio Design, but most of you are going to be familiar with the camera tools inside of Revit. So let's establish our camera view there and then we'll use that camera view once we're inside of Max to do our renderings. So I'm going to go to my level one view. I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to select the camera tool, not the camera. The create camera tool. I'm going to establish a location right about here. My viewpoint. And establish the basic parameters of my view that I'm interested in. I'm going to use this view as uh, my export, so I'm going to go to the big R, and it's very important to actually export the view that you want. Um, that way it will bring that camera directly into 3D Studio Design. So from the view that I want to import into 3D Studio, I'm going to go to export FBX file, and then I'm going to just save this first version as light test sun. So I'm going to say save, then I'm going to go over to 3D Studio Design. I'm going to go to the big M, import, and I'm going to import that FBX file. So that gives me several things right off the bat. First of all, I can see that that is the camera that I established inside of Revit. That is the default sun that was inside of Revit. And I actually want to go ahead and delete that. We're going to set up a custom daylighting system inside of 3D Studio Design. It will give us a little bit uh, better results in terms of our lighting analysis and it's going to behave a little bit more predictably inside of 3D Studio uh, as a, a custom built object inside of the program. So we'll start there just by going to the Create button, or the Create drop-down list, Lights, and Daylight System. So this is a, a quick note that we are creating a mental ray photographic exposure control. I'm going to left click and drag to create a compass icon and when I release the left mouse button it's going to give me the opportunity to establish the height that we're going to put the sun symbol at. The height of the sun is actually not important in particular it's only a symbol giving us a direction or an understanding of the direction of where the sun is coming from or the sunlight is coming from the exact location really isn't isn't that important it's just a relative symbol for us to understand a direction the next thing that we need to do is actually set a location up for the sun so i'm going to go to get location and we'll select joplin missouri i know that's where your project is at You can see it snaps a small icon to Joplin. I'm going to say OK. That basically gives us the appropriate latitude and longitude. And we now know that the sun is currently at noon on the summer solstice. If we change the time of day, you can actually see the sun traveling in an arc about um, the east to west. Again, that's the north arrow on the compass to change true north on the project I can go to my rotate I'm gonna select the compass and then I can left click and drag to move the north arrow around and you can see it's actually taking the position of the sun with it relative to the compass so I'm gonna go ahead and put north sort of up and to the right a bit on this project now I'm going to go back I'm gonna to go to select object I'm gonna select my sun object and I want to set a specific time of day and month to do my lighting analysis test with. So to do that with the sun selected, I'm going to go to this blue piece of macaroni called Modify. 
I'm going to go back to my setup button and now I can set a specific time of day um, for instance let's use about 11 o'clock on the summer solstice so the next thing that I want to do is go ahead and I'm going to maximize this plan view window and we're going to locate a plane, a virtual plane, that we can run a lighting analysis on. So I'm going to go to lighting analysis and the lighting analysis assistant. This lighting analysis assistant toolbox right here or panel menu um, has four tabs. We'll primarily spend most of our time in this analysis output tab. But we're going to go to create light meter and now I'm going to left click and drag to create a basic light meter and essentially you're seeing that this is one single plane sort of a, a large piece of geometry and I'm going to go ahead and move that so we can see it just a little bit better to the outside so this plane is made up of four pieces of pot four pieces of geometry and that is made up of three lines three across and three high so if I go uh, to the Modify tab again, looking at this, you'll see that I've got three length and three width segments. The lighting analysis is going to give me a readout at each intersection. So I want to go ahead and increase the number of length and width segments so that I have a little bit more data to work with. So I'm going to use 14 and 5 in this particular case to create sort of a nice square grid. I'm going to move that back into place underneath the roof of my object. And then I'm also going to use the elevation view to move that plane up just above the ground plane. From this point, I'm going to go ahead and sort of center up my windows. And I'm going to switch this particular viewport, viewport in 3D Studio Design to my camera view. To do that, I'm going to right click in the window to make the window active. That's what the yellow band around the window means. I'm going to left click on the word perspective and go to cameras, 3D view one. So now I can actually see a really good, re good view of what that light meter is doing on the inside. Under the lighting analysis assistant menu, I'm going to click cre uh, calculate all light meters now. It's going to take just a second to run. And now I actually have a really good readout of the specific foot candle readings inside of this space. If you are unsure of the values you're getting uh, or the units that, it, that 3D Studio Design might be using, I believe the default units are not American, but the default units are actually international. If I switch that, you'll actually see the readings are now in the thousands. To, to fix that, it's simply under Customize, Unit Setup, our lighting units, we want those to switch to American so that we're getting a foot candle readout. From here, we're going to go to creating our first rendering with the lighting analysis tool as well, Im embedded as part of our rendering. So underneath this same menu, analysis output, I'm going to click on create image overlay render effect. And this essentially adds a tool inside of 3D Studio Design that's going to put the numerical values over our rendering menu. By clicking on this again, we want to not just show the numbers over the screen, but we're actually more interested in showing the numbers from the light meter helper object, which is what this plane is. So I'm going to select this, I'm going to unselect that. The next thing that we're going to do is establish a couple of rendering values. So I'm going to go ahead and close this menu and I'm going to go to rendering and render setup. What I want to do with this menu in particular is verify that the view that I'm going to be rendering is the 3D view with my camera. So for the camera that I created inside of Revit, it was called 3D View 1. I'm just going to make sure that that is selected. Next, I'm going to go to Exposure Control under the Rendering drop-down list. I want to make sure that my Exposure Control is set to one of the default presets. I'm just going to start with Outdoor Daylight Clear Sky because that's more than likely uh, 
the basic setup that we have. And that's going to provide some default values for me to work with. Inside of this panel, there is also a great little tool right here called a render preview. So before I do a final render, I can click on the render preview button. And this is going to give me a very quick estimation of what my final rendering is going to look like. Once I have this rendering, I can also come in and modify the exposure value. And I can see the impact that that would have. That's not too different than sort of thinking of reestablishing a shutter speed and f-stop with a virtual camera. And as I change that exposure value, you can actually see it modifying that particular feature of what essentially is our virtual camera inside of the system. So I'm going to go ahead and close this menu. I'm going to go back to my base rendering panel. And for the sake of speeding this up in the tutorial, um, I'm going to use a quick preset for uh, a rendering. And this would be a good setup to also do a, a, a test render. Use the default settings right here, a quarter for uh, samples per pixel and four. But for this particular tutorial, I'm going to set this to 1 16th and 1 16th to get a very quick rendering. I'm going to click the Render button. And we should have a rough but accurate rendering of the lighting conditions inside of the space. And once that rendering is completed, 3D Studio Design will overlay the numerical values and foot candles on top of the rendering, as well as providing us the location, the time, and the maximum illuminance in the space. To export this file then outside of 3D Studio Design, I'm going to click the Save button. And I'm simply going to write a JPEG file to my desktop. I'll call this Light Test 1. And that's the first step in terms of using the Daylighting Analysis tool inside of 3D Studio Design. The next tutorial will look at using artificial lighting.